Welcome to AI Stay Up Close, brought to you by the Department of Public Relations and Multicultural Outreach. This program will take a closer look at the Austin Independent School District's programs and departments. During the year, I will interview key administrators about district operations. I'm Pat Dabbert, and I'm your host for AI Stay Up Close. Joining me today are Bill Kareech, the Chief Performance Officer, and Suzanne Burke, the Executive Director of Curricula. And we will be discussing STAR, the State of Texas Assessments of Academic Readiness, our new testing system for the Austin Independent School District and the entire state. Well, welcome. Thank you, Pat. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, what is STAR? If you can kind of give a brief overview of what the new test is. Absolutely. Well, STAR, as you said, stands for um, the State of Texas Assessment of Academic Readiness, and it's the accountability assessment that replaces tax. Um, it's implemented this year for the first time in students, or for students in grades nine and below. Why is there a new assessment program for Texas students? It's not unusual for states to re-examine their testing program. Most states um, take a look at their standards and review, revise their standards and revise their tests periodically. In Texas, I think there was a consensus both at the legislature and among uh, Texas educators that um, it was time to raise the bar, that tax uh, really wasn't rigorous enough. Um, so the new program we're expecting uh, to be um, you know, more challenging than the previous one. Uh, the focus is on uh, getting kids ready for advanced academic work and specifically on um, ensuring that high school students are uh, college ready. So the, the whole focus is uh, on, on raising the bar and um, creating a world-class sort of set of standards and assessments. So in what grade levels and subject areas will students be assessed under this new testing system? The students in grades three through eight will be assessed in math and reading. In grades four and seven, there's a writing test as well. Um, fifth and eighth grades, are, um, students are tested for science. And then um, eighth grade social studies. Now, the big change um, between TAX and, and STAR is the addition of 12 end of course exams. So, in the past, TAX assessed um, off grade level TEKS, if you will. So, for example, the exit level uh, test administered to 11th graders assessed standards that were taught in 10th grade and, and 9th grade and even 8th grade. So we think that's a great improvement to the system, that students will actually be assessed on the standards that they're taught um, in a specific course in the same year. So the 12 end of course exams are uh, English 1, English 2, English 3. Um, for social studies, there's uh, world geography, world history, U.S. history. Science is biology, um, chemistry, and physics. And then um, math is algebra 1, geometry, and algebra 2. In general, how is it different from tax? Uh, Suzanne addressed some of the issues. Primarily, as I said earlier, uh, we're expecting the new test to be uh, significantly more difficult uh, than the prior tests. Uh, there'll be a focus on um, application, uh, on analysis, synthesis, mm -hmm. uh, and, and sort of more rigorous uh, standards. Many of these are what, what the state is calling readiness standards. Um, but as Suzanne said, the biggest difference is going to be at the high school level. Mm -hmm. In the past, we had what, what is often called a hybrid test mm -hmm. because the high school tests weren't aligned specifically to a particular course. Um, this year, that, it's all changing, with, starting with our ninth graders. Uh, the, um, the new assessments at the high school level will be specifically aligned to courses. So for this year, the ninth graders, that would be typically would be Algebra 1, Biology, uh, World Geography, and English 1. Mm -hmm. So uh, for the high school students, it's going to be quite different, and we're, uh, by all indications, we're expecting it to be uh, a more difficult test. Mm -hmm. So how will student performance be described on the new test? The performance, there'll be three levels. Um, they uh, be advanced, um, satisfactory, and unsatisfactory. 
And it gets a little complicated because the unsatisfactory level, there'll actually be two levels within unsatisfactory. One is uh, whether the student met a minimum score. And uh, to get credit for that particular test, you have to reach the minimum score. Uh, and then there'll be, um, so there'll be two levels within unsatisfactory. Unsatisfactory that they've met the minimum score and unsatisfactory where they haven't met the minimum score. And if they don't meet the minimum score, uh, then they don't get credit for that particular end of course exam and would have to uh, retake the exam. Uh, these are also uh, tied um, to the, the diploma system that the state is implementing, and there'll be three diplomas, a minimum diploma, a recommended diploma, and a distinguished diploma. And for example, to receive a distinguished diploma, you would have to score at the advanced level on both Algebra two and English three. So this uh, new diploma, is, that is new as well for this year, the, the three you just mentioned? Yes, yes. And well, which students will be required to take a STAR? So students um, in ninth grade this year, this school year, and below. So the, the STAR tests assess the, the courses and, and content areas that we mentioned for third graders through ninth graders this year. Um, students currently in 10th, 11th, and 12th grade will still graduate under the tax accountability system, so they'll uh, transition um, out that tax system over the next uh, three years, and then it will transition to completely STAR tests. Okay, so some will still be taking the exactly. tax Exactly. We tests. do have students in 10th, 11th, and 12th still taking tax. If a student is enrolled in middle school and concurrently receiving instruction in a middle school course, and a corresponding high school course, mm -hmm. is the student required to take both the related tests? No. Uh, the, the students will only be required to take one test in, in a given subject. So the most typical one for an eighth grader, for example, would be Algebra 1. And so um, the student will only be required to take the Algebra 1 exam, which is part of the requirement for graduation. Um, and will not be required to take any other um, math tests, for example. Okay. There's been a lot of uh, concern about the 15% grading requirement. Uh, does it apply to the student's grade point average and their class ranking for this year? The statute uh, mandates that the 15% um, be um, assessed on the student's final grade for the course. But as far as their GPA and class rank, they give districts some flexibility to make that decision locally. So obviously we're getting um, feedback um, from our key stakeholders, parents, students, teachers, administrators, and the like. We're watching what happens with other districts, not only in Central Texas, but across the state. Um, the commissioner recently uh, also indicated that uh, districts can apply for a waiver for this initial year as we transition to the STAR accountability system. So this year, Austin ISD is applying for that waiver and will not implement uh, that 15% this year. We will, however, implement for next year. So again, we'll be making that decision um, based on feedback from stakeholders and um, students as well. And we already started the, some of this testing, is that correct? Absolutely, yes, <laughs> yes. Does the 15% requirement apply to students receiving special ed services who take the general STAR end of course assessments? If they take the regular uh, STAR exam, uh, then the rule, when it goes into effect, and that won't be this year, mm -hmm. uh, they would be subject to the same rule. If okay. they are taking modified exams, then the 15% rule would not, uh, would not apply. How will the STAR modified assessments differ from tax modified? Well, as Bill mentioned earlier, you know, we expect that rigor to apply to the, the modified tests as well. Um, we do know, however, that they will be shorter than the uh, general ed uh, by about 20%. Um, fewer items. Uh, the other thing is that students who take the modified assessments, the modified STAR tests, graduate under the minimum plan. So those students are only required to pass nine of the EOCs. So they will not be required to take the Algebra two EOC or the Physics or Chemistry um, EOCs. Which courses will STAR modified and of course assessments be available? Mm -hmm. 
we could repeat them. Right? Yeah, there's, <laughs> there, nine. there's a lot. Yeah. yeah. There's nine, so it would be yeah. all. It would be all the all of the uh, ones and of course exams except, except. Mm -hmm. physics, chemistry, mm -hmm. and algebra two. Okay. And that's because students who graduate under the minimum plan typically take math models and IPC, which is integrated physics and chemistry, and they're not there are not EOC tests developed for those two courses. For the integrated courses. exactly. Does the change to STAR impact uh, annual yearly progress, the federal standard? As of today, um, the, the No Child Left Behind requirement uh, in Texas still applies, just as it has in the past. So um, there's a lot of things going on at the state and federal level. But as of today, uh, the same approach uh, would be true um, as in the past. Um, the, the Texas Education Agency is doing what they're calling a bridging study, uh, which basically means they're embedding tax-like items uh, into the new exams, and then this summer they will use those items in order to produce um, uh, scores that are equated to the prior test. So that's the plan uh, for Texas as of, of the moment. For 10th grade, the students will still be taking tax, so under the federal rules, uh, they only use data from grades 3 through 8 and 10, and since this year at grade 10, students will still be taking tax, not mm -hmm. the new end of course mm -hmm. exam. Where it gets a little complicated is that many states, in fact several states, have already uh, been approved by the U.S. Department of Education for waivers from No Child Left Behind. Uh, we're anticipating as many as 30-some-odd uh, uh, states will have approved waivers mm -hmm. uh, in the very near future. Texas, uh, as, as far as we know, Texas has not applied for a waiver. Um, they may be working on one, but it, as of today, we don't believe they've applied for a waiver. And uh, as a result, uh, we will be accountable uh, under No Child Left Behind just as we were uh, in the past. Well, this year I realized that STAR was uh, time limited more so than right. text. Can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. Uh, there was not a time limit in the past. This is the first accountability system that is timed. And so the assessments are, um, are now timed for four hours. And um, in hearing the commissioner speak and, and others from the Texas Education Agency, it was not their intent with an accountability system to have students testing, you know, eight hours a day, 10 hours. And, and we've heard reports, of course, of students, you know, well into the late afternoon, early evening taking tests. And so they have restricted um, testing to a four hour limit. So as I said, we already started it. And when will we have the next round of testing this in this school year? Uh, it continues through the month of April. Through the month of April. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then they have an opportunity to retake the test? Just Correct. one opportunity or how does that work? A second opportunity in June. In June. Correct. Is there any other information that we haven't touched on that you'd like to share about STAR? Well, one thing we did in anticipation of the transition to the STAR test is in our curriculum documents, which are housed in the SchoolNet Instructional Management System, um, we've identified um, the readiness standards and the supporting standards, as well as dual coded items, which is new for STAR this year, as well as reporting categories. So to support teaching and learning, we feel like our curriculum is well aligned um, to the rigor of STAR. And I guess I would add that the assessment office and the curriculum and instruction office have worked uh, closely together this year uh, anticipating um, the increased rigor of the, the new state assessments and uh, we've done a lot of modifications to our own what we call formative testing program. The first uh, phase of the modification was to try to reduce the amount of testing so we've reduced a lot of the what used to be called what what are called mm -hmm. the beginning of the year benchmarks and the end of year benchmarks to a, a very um, minimum uh, program, uh, and we've also modified the middle of the year benchmarks. So we uh, now have two benchmarks that we administer as part of the local program: one at the end of week 12, and mm -hmm. a second benchmark at the end of week 25. Uh, those tests tend to uh, range from an hour to about two hours in length. And what we've tried to do is, um, uh, particularly for example at grade nine where we knew that this was a, 
a major um, concern of parents, of students, uh, that, their, that their children would be ready uh, for an exam that's going to count for their, uh, towards their graduation. Uh, we felt it was critically important that we try to model uh, our, using our best information that we had from, from the state, um, exams that are aligned to our curriculum. So uh, we didn't try to build into our curriculum something different from uh, what we expect teachers and students to work on. Uh, so we closely aligned our benchmarks to our, our curriculum. And at the end of week 12, then we administered uh, benchmark assessments uh, for example, at grade nine in Algebra One, Biology, World Geography, and English One, uh, so that the students and teachers would know uh, within, as close as we can make the test, uh, how they were going to do in the future and, and whether they were being successful in, in learning the content within the curriculum. So, um, you know, we feel very positive that we've done everything that, uh, uh, that we can do to help uh, the students get ready for the exams. Uh, we thought it was critically important that we not go in kind of blind uh, without any information about whether the students were ready or not. Have we had any feedback from any of the schools since we already have had some testing uh, this year? You know, we really haven't at this point, at least my department hasn't. Um, you know, they are secure tests and so um, we're very cognizant of adhering to guidelines from TEA and not looking closely at the test. You know, it's more monitoring students as they take the test. So the first uh, feedback we really will get will, will be when we look at the data, the assessment data. I was just wondering if the students had commented uh, to any of the teachers how they felt. I know there was a lot of anxiety. Likely they have. <laughs> I haven't heard it yet. <laughs> right. Well, a lot, of the, a lot of the high school exams uh, are still are still Pending. coming yes. up to come. In, in, right. uh, exactly. in the in, in about a month. Mm -hmm. uh, so we haven't heard back um, you know from those exams. Mm -hmm. um, you know we're of course we know we have great students and we're sure they're yes. going to do well and uh, our job is to to make sure they have the, the teachers have their, the tools they they need mm -hmm. to to help the kids get ready. So we're as confident as we can be that uh, the students are going to be ready and um, you know, we'll just have to wait and see what the results are when, when we get them back. So when, when will we be getting those results? Uh, well, for, for the high school uh, exams, we'll get it back, um, uh, you know, before the end of the school year. Mm -hmm. uh, the standard setting is already taking place at the state level. Mm -hmm. uh, for the other exams, uh, for th grades three through eight, uh, we believe there's going to be a fairly long delay mm -hmm. until uh, we'll have raw data, but we won't actually know what the student performance level data looks like until uh, well into the fall and maybe even into early winter. So oh, okay. uh, it, there's mm -hmm. going to be, it, right now the focus from the state is on the end of course exams, of mm -hmm. course, uh, because the students need to know whether they're going to get credit. Um, for graduation. For graduation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for being here and sharing all that information on the new testing system. Okay. My pleasure. Back. Thank you, Pat. For more information on this topic, please visit the AISD website at www.austinisd.org. If you have suggestions for future programs, please call or email. Thank you for joining me. I'm Pat Dabbert with AISD Up Close.